Hey guys, Skyberries here in one of my favorite flying locations and we've got a new little treat here this little quad Archangel sent us to review so we're gonna step through the specs we're gonna see what makes it tick what kind of electronics it's using how it flies how it's tuned and our first out-of-box experience So pulling this out of the box, I'm initially quite impressed with the build quality. Uh, this quad looks like it was made to take a hit. It has all of the carbon covered with these nice printed boots on all of the places that you're going to probably smash it up the most. The camera is well protected, which I think is an ideal feature for a quad that you're either getting to learn on or you're bashing up and beating up. It also has a very easily accessible VTX, so you can change the channels and the bands. You can fly with a lot of people readily. You're not in here trying to poke little buttons inside the quadcopter. And it's also running some pretty impressive electronics. Now, this quadcopter is using the latest HGLRC 20x20 stack, which for its time, I feel is one of the more proven and tested stacks in the 20 by 20 size market. So it keeps the weight down, but doesn't limit the features. Now this quad does come with an onboard screen overlay. So you can see things like voltage and telemetry in your goggles. Um, I'm using the FR Sky version here. And then it's also using these 1507 4000 KV brushless motors. And these are swinging a 3052 prop. So they should have plenty of power. It's quite a bit of high KV, but I'm running a 3S battery. So they should have plenty of KV to make this feel and fly like a real quad, one of its bigger brothers, and also be small enough to be highly maneuverable and rip around in these trees. So let's get to it. Let's put a pack to it. I haven't changed any of the stock settings, any of the tune. All I've done is open it up, bind my transmitter, set my arming switch, and now I'm ready to fly. And it's pretty noticeable that the level mode is surprisingly good. Now, I have my suspicions that with most level mode quads, as soon as you crash them a couple times, you need to unplug and replug to start them back up again. But the level mode is working surprisingly well. It's been a while since I've flown in level mode, but if you're a beginner, it's really good for first getting on the sticks, kind of getting the hang of it, getting the quad up in the air and flying around. So we're gonna flip to horizontal cheat mode now. So my transmitter there is calling it cheat mode because you're in level mode, but if you go to the end stick positions, you can still do some rolls and some flips and things. But as soon as the sticks are back in the middle, it goes back to level mode, which you'll be comfortable with flying with. Now we're gonna flip over to full acro mode, which I'll let you look up what the difference is and oh, I'm automatically really uncomfortable in acro mode. The sticks are feeling really sluggish and soupy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change and I'm going to flip the quad back into horizon mode for a minute so I'm a little more comfortable with it. So I feel like I'm back in control. And then I'm going to come back down and I'm going to actually start plugging my own rates on. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, so already it's feeling much better. In the cold weather, I've got to start my little goggle fans going here, otherwise I'm gonna fog up. There we go. Oh yeah. So it's feeling much more comfortable and I can already tell it. I'm, I'm gonna feel much more capable flying with this drone. All right, so we've got our HD camera on here. You can see them just mounted on top. So we're gonna take a couple laps, do a little freestyle, some flips, some rolls, get into the tighter parts of these trees and see how maneuverable this little guy is with some added weight. So I am impressed with how well it hauled that GoPro for a little three inch quad. 
I didn't feel like I had all of the power, but I certainly didn't have too much trouble getting up over these treetops a couple times. Now the battery wasn't too happy with it, but it's mainly just because I'm I think I'm just in this really cold weather here. All right, so I'm about four or five batteries through this little guy, and I've been bumping into a couple trees. I've had some fun packs here, flown around, found some fun lines. And I have to say, I've never had a bad time flying a quadcopter, but I did come out here with a couple reservations about this little Archangel drone. So are you going to take a little unit like this to the races? Are you going to be competitive? Because it does boast that it's a racing drone. And I don't think there's any other way to really test if it's a racing drone, aside from flying it around a race track. So let's set up a little track, let's fly it around, and let's gather a little bit of what we think. In three, two, one, go. Okay, we're headed out. We can see that gate really well. We know that we've got to come through these trees here. We've got a weave left. We got a weave right, head back to the left. Okay, we're gonna walk up through this little hole in the tree. We're gonna split S, come down through the green gate. We're gonna hook a left through these trees over this dead log. We're gonna quickly turn around and punch through this little hole, turning left again through the yellow gate on the table, turning right, kind of following the trail, left, right, through the tunnel, back to the pink gate. All right. Now all we gotta do is get faster. Okay. Getting faster. Trying to remember the track for our first time through. Try to not hit these trees. Cut them as tight as we can. All right, now we're booking. Oh, battery's burning. It's all right, we're gonna finish this lap out. A subtle left, a subtle right. We're a little off track. Lost our pace and finished. Woo! So on the more wide open tracks, this quad is going to have a little bit of a disadvantage because it's not going to have the overall top speed of a larger prop quad, but in tight little close quarter races like this where you're poking through the little tree hole this one allows a little bit more room for error which i can appreciate on this track all right so let's test the range of this little dude now i have it on the lowest transmission power for the video and i also have not done anything for the antennas on the inside i don't think they're in very optimal positioning coming stock but they are well protected in there so they're not going to get chopped so let's give it a little try let's give it a little test we're going to see if we can fly it out the other side of this park and back, which I would assume is all the range you would need for a little quadcopter like this. All right, and we're off. Let's go see what we find down there. Got some lovely trees. It looks like we have some of my other flying friends. They are well accustomed to me. I typically leave those gooses alone just because I don't want to be a nuisance to them. The geese, goosen, geese eye. And so far pretty good. We don't feel like we're getting any lockouts. We're not having any trouble. Um, nothing is having too much of a hard time. Now I'm facing with the carbon fiber plate directly pointed toward me, like it's a flat plate right now. So this is going to be the worst RSSI or the worst receiver signal strain that we're going to be seeing right here, and I'm not having any issues. So I would say that where the antennas are at are definitely good enough. Um, if I ever felt like I needed more range, that I could get out there and do some other stuff. Yeah, these geese, they're, they're just kind of looking at me. They're like, yeah, we've seen you before. Pretty desensitized. My initial impressions. So I have to say, when I came out here, my reservations were that this quad was going to be heavy, bulky, and it wasn't going to be nimble and agile on its feet as I wanted. And I mostly found that was not the case. I found that I could put my rates on it. The motors weren't oversaturated. I didn't. It didn't feel sluggish. It didn't feel slow. It felt quite nimble, and I felt very in control. Now that being said, it is a little bit heavier quad. So if you compare it to a really ultralight three-inch, it's 
not going to have the same performance, not going to go at the same top speed, it's not going to have the same punch out power, it's not going to have the same acceleration. But what this quad does better than the ultralight three inches is its robustness. Now I definitely felt comfortable flying around in these trees, I didn't feel like I was going to nick anything, go down and break my quad and have to go fix it, which I think is a very optimal trait if you're trying to start out, if you're getting to learn. So on a scale of 1 to 10 for what I look at in a quad, is it fun to fly? It's probably my top one. I'm going to give this one probably about, I'm going to give it about an 8 or a 9 out of a 1 to 10. And I have a lot of fun flying, so I might be biased. It has a good tune on it. You don't have to mess with it, which is why my rating is so high. Ease of maintenance. I'm going to give this quad probably a 9. I'm going to put it right up there because... All you have to do is undo these two screws, you can swing this back, and you have access to all the inner electronics. All right, electronics. I'm gonna give it a seven. Now, the only reason I'm not gonna give it something a little bit higher is because I haven't put enough batteries through this quad to really have it show its true colors. I didn't crash the motors very hard. I don't know how well the bearings in them are going to last. Now, I've only put probably 10 packs through this quad. I think that you really need to have upwards of 40 or 50 before electronics really show whether they're going to burn out or not. Um, I appreciate the quality camera. It's one I've used in other builds. I also was surprised with how well the VTX and antenna combo matched. I did fly to the other side of the park and back a couple times, and I didn't have any video issues. Uh, I did on a couple different channels. And although I was pretty skeptical about the position of the antennas for the receiver inside the quad, they seem to be good enough, especially for what this quad is rated for. Okay, overall top speed for a quad that is designed to be a race quad, I'm gonna give it probably about a six. And that's not because its top speed is bad, but if you're going to market a quad to be a racing quad, I think that it should be a little bit more competitive. Okay, let's move on to style and looks. I'm gonna give this quad probably a seven because I think they did some really cool light work on the side plates and across the top on all four arms. Most quads don't have that much lighting LED, so I think that they really went out of their way on this quad to bring you a nice, bright, shiny product that you pull out of the box and are initially impressed with. All right, let's talk about competitiveness. Now that's a loaded rating. If everybody's flying the exact same quad, then obviously the quad is going to be highly competitive. I'm going to have to say based on other RTF quads on the market, so other quads of its kind, I'm going to say that its competitive rating is probably probably around a 6, a 6 or a 7. Well, we've had quite a bit of fun testing this little Archangel drone here. It surpassed my initial impressions. Would I recommend this to you? Would I recommend this to one of my friends? If you're someone who values a quad that you can pull out of a box that's going to fly well, that has quality components, there's going to be no hassle, then yes, absolutely, I would recommend it for you. If you're someone who likes to tinker, who likes to build their own stuff, who likes to do a lot of modifications and upgrades, I would not recommend this quad to you. That being said, I think the Archangel has done a pretty good job of piecing together, engineering, and designing around quality components on the market to bring the best possible ready-to-fly quad that's going to be capable of racing, capable of freestyle, and capable of providing you with quite a bit of fun in the tiny little package. That being said, over and out.